This is part 98 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using both claim type and claim value in policy based authorization in ASP.NET Core. At the moment, when we navigate to list users page and then click edit on one of the users, we see here the list of all claims that belong to this user and these claims are stored in this ASP.NET user claims table. Let's view the data that we have in this table. Notice the claim type and claim value columns. We are using the claim type as the claim value and if we take a look at some of the policies that we have defined in configure services method of the startup class, this delete role policy requires delete role claim and this edit role policy requires edit role claim. So the point that I'm trying to make is to satisfy this edit role policy, that is for this policy to succeed, the logged in user must have edit role claim type. The important point to keep in mind is we are only checking the claim type and not claim value. So irrespective of the claim value, as long as the logged in user has this edit role claim type, this policy succeeds. Now, most claims come with a value. Consider this policy. To satisfy this policy, the logged in user must have edit role claim type with a claim value of true. At the moment, if we take a look at ASP.NET user claims table, we are storing claim type as a claim value. Instead, we want to store true or false as a claim value. For example, if the user has this edit role claim type, then store a value of true, otherwise a value of false. On this edit user view, when we click this manage claims button, we are redirected to manage user claims action within the administration controller. So if we go to manage user claims action in our administration controller, this is the method that has the required code to update claims data in the underlying ASP.NET user claims database table. It is this add claims async method of the user manager service that adds the list of claims to the user. Notice at the moment we are using claim type as the value for both claim type and claim value. We want to change this. If a claim is checked on the UI, then we want to store a value of true against that claim in the underlying database table. If it is not checked, then we want to store a value of false. For that, we need to change this line right here. So if the claim is selected on the UI, then we want to store a value of true. Otherwise, we want to store a value of false. We don't need this where extension method anymore because we are anyway going to store all these claims in the database table for a given user. The only difference is if a claim is selected, we'll store a value of true, otherwise false. So let's remove the where extension method and also format this code a bit. With the changes we have just made, let me uncheck delete role claim and when we click the update button, a value of true must be stored against these two claims, create and edit role, whereas a value of false must be stored against this claim. Let's click the update button. Notice at the moment, we are only displaying user claim values, which doesn't make much sense. We'll fix this edit user view in just a bit. But before that, if we take a look at the database table, notice for this user, for these three claims, we are storing a value of true or false as expected. But for this user, we are still storing the claim type as the claim value. We'll fix the claims for this user through the UI in just a bit. But before that, let's fix this edit user view. Instead of just displaying the user claim values, let's display claim type along with the claim value, which would make more sense. In the administration controller, let's get to edit user action. This is the one that responds to HTTP GET and if we scroll down a bit, we are only retrieving claim value here. In addition to claim value, we also want claim type. And let's include colon as the separator between the claim type and claim value. Notice now we see the claim types along with the values, which makes more sense. We have another small issue. Notice when I click manage claims, 
we know this user does not have delete role claim but this checkbox is still checked we need to fix this and the code for that is within manage user claims that responds to HTTP get so within the administration controller let's get to manage user claims if we scroll down a bit notice we are setting is selected property to true only by checking the claim type we also want to make sure the claim value is true so and claim dot value equals true notice now delete role claim is unchecked for this user let's also grant delete role claim click update notice for all the three claims we have a value of true as expected now let's cancel and go to the list users page and edit this user test at presumetech.com and for this user let's manage his claims and at the moment he does not have any claims let's only give him create role claim update and on the UI here we only see true against create role false against these two other claims when we click manage claims notice only create role claim has the checkbox checked if we take a look at the database table ASP.NET user claims notice all the claims have a value of true or false now here is what we want to do we want to use claim value along with the claim type in the authorization check all of our claim policies are in the configure services method of the startup class at the moment to satisfy this edit role policy it's enough if edit role claim type is present now what we want to do is use the claim value as well so for this policy to be satisfied we want the user to have edit role claim type along with the value of true we pass the claim value as a second parameter one important point to keep in mind claim type comparison is case insensitive whereas claim value comparison is case sensitive meaning it doesn't really matter how we have this edit role claim type typed here whether it is in lowercase uppercase or a combination of both as long as it is edit role with a space between the two words it's going to match with the claim type we have in the database table because claim type comparison is case insensitive whereas claim value comparison is case sensitive meaning the values have to exactly match including the case so here if we have true with an uppercase T like that but in the database we have true with all lowercase letters the value will not match so claim value comparison is case sensitive I signed out and signed back in with this test username test at presumetech.com and if we take a look at this test user claims notice this user only has create role claim he does not have edit role and delete role claims because their values are false now let's go to the list roles page notice edit button is not visible that's because if we take a look at the list roles view edit button is right here and for it to be displayed edit role policy must be succeeded and for edit role policy to be succeeded the logged in user must have edit role claim along with a value of true now let me log out and log back in with the other username prajim at prajimtech.com we know this user has edit role claim with a value of true so if we navigate to the list roles page notice we see edit button as expected in this example for the edit role claim type we specified a single allowed value true now consider this example here we have a list of three allowed values USA India UK so for this allowed country policy to succeed country claim must be present and the value of this claim must be one from this list either USA India or UK we are able to specify a list of values here because if you look at the second parameter of the required claim method it is a params string array claim type comparison is case insensitive whereas claim value comparison is case sensitive that's it in this video. Thank you for listening.